This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, in this lecture, uh, we're going to look at bank reconciliations. Um, what it is, essentially, uh, the most obvious check on ourselves of all is periodically to check the balance in the cash account as against the bank statement we receive from the bank. And in fact, most companies will do it at least once a month, often more often, because if uh, the uh, uh, balance in the cash account doesn't agree with the uh, balance on the bank statement, we have to sort out why. Now, there are various reasons they might not agree, and I'll go through them shortly. Uh, but obviously, if there's a mistake, that needs correcting. But there are other reasons why um, the balance in the cash account might not agree with the bank statement. We have to make sure we can explain what the difference is. And that's what we mean by reconciling. It's explaining any differences. Now, before I talk about why there can be differences, and show you how it can be asked in an exam, I do need to go through a little bit of terminology. Uh, they mention the, the headings are on the first and second page of the uh, free lecture notes. But I do need to go through a bit of terminology because that's one place where you could be um, tricked up. And the first thing I need to get out of the way right from the beginning because it makes a huge difference, is the actual way bank statements appear. You see, in our, our books, in our cash account, if we receive cash, we debit cash. So if I receive 100, We debit cash 100 and credit somewhere. And equally, if I paid out 20, we credit cash and we debit somewhere. And we'd be left with a balance of 80. A debit balance in our cash account means that we have cash of 80. Had, we, had it been a credit balance, it would mean we are negative at the bank, we were overdrawn. However, although that's what we do and that's correct, debit cash when you receive, credit cash when you pay, the bank, when you look at a bank statement, they appear to do things wrongly. Now the bank uh, tends to show it if Different banks set it up slightly differently, but tend to show it as, as just one column. But they'll say, receive 100, but they say they've credited your account. You pay 20, they say they've debited your account. And they would tell you that your balance is a credit balance. They seem to do things opposite. In our, our accounts, we've got a debit balance of 80, and that is correct. But the bank tells you you've got a credit balance of 80. Now, there is a good reason for it. The reason is, you see, that in the bank's own books, The bank will have its own nominal ledger and things. And if I pay 100 into the bank, if I put 100 cash into the bank, the bank has received 100. So in its cash account, it debits 100. And where are they going to credit? Well, they credit an account for me, 100, because they owe me 100. And because I'm very old, I can remember the days when the bank statement was just a photocopy of the page from their ledger. The bank statement used to look like that. It used to be a T account. And they'd credited my account 100 because they owed me 100. Now, of course, they don't send bank statements out as T accounts. But 
they still say you're credited 100 or when you take out money you're debited 20 and so on. So that's the reason, but just be very, very careful when you're doing questions. If ever you're given a balance, is it a balance in the cash account? In which case, if you've got cash, it's a debit. Or is it a balance on the bank statement? Because if uh, you've got money in the bank, the balance will be a credit. All right, the rest of the terminology, let's just run down. Uh, checks. I don't know, it depends uh, which country uh, you live in as to how familiar you are. Uh, but a cheque is just one way of paying people. It's getting less common in the UK. But if I owe you a uh, hundred, actually legally you can write this on any piece of paper, but the bank gives you a special book. Uh, you put pay, whatever your name is, one hundred dollars or whatever the currency is. You write it in letters, you put the date on, you sign it, and I give you that cheque, or I post you that cheque, and you take it to your bank. Your bank contacts my bank. My All my bank details are printed on the cheque, uh, but your bank contacts my bank, and the money moves. Now, it does present us a, a problem in a minute, but uh, uh, essentially, um, if you give somebody a cheque, you are paying money. If you re somebody gives you a cheque, you're receiving money. Uh, next one, drawer of a cheque. The drawer, for ordinary people, is something you put things in. For accountants, the drawer uh, is the person who writes the cheque. So I just wrote that cheque to you for a hundred. I am the drawer. I draw the cheque. Uh, unpresented cheques. Now here's how we do have a problem later. If, we have, if I pay you by cheque, I owe you a hundred. I write that cheque. And as soon as I've written the cheque, as far as I'm concerned, I've paid it in my cash account. You know, maybe I have a balance of a thousand. I just paid you a hundred. I credit cash at a hundred. And so my balance is now nine hundred. Uh, but the problem it creates as you see, maybe I've posted that cheque to you, so it'll be a few days before you receive it. Well, when you receive it, you've got to take it to your bank, but you know, you may wait a few days, or you may post it to your bank. And even when you've given it to your bank, they have to contact my bank to get the money. And that can take several days as well. So, although I give you the cheque today, or post the cheque today, and I've entered it today, and I've, I've 900 left, it could easily be a week or even longer before the money actually leaves my bank account. And so, my bank statement you know, I had a thousand, so it showed a balance of a thousand. Remember, it would show a credit balance. A hundred is going to leave the account and it will go down to 900. But for all the reasons I said, you know, the time, the checks in the post and so on, maybe for a whole week, the bank statement will still show a thousand, even though I've only got 900 left to spend. You know, uh, and if tomorrow happens to be the end of my year, now I say, right, I've got 900, let's check with the bank. The bank statement still shows a 1,000 because of this check in the post. Well, that's what unpresented checks are. Unpresented checks they're checks we have written
So we're paying money. They've been entered in the cash account. So when I write the check, I credit cash 100. But they've not yet appeared on the bank statement. So that problem I just showed you, there will be a period where the balance on the um, cash account will not equal the balance on the bank statement because there are these checks in the post. Of course, it can work the other way around because equally, if I receive a check, you send me a check in the post. The minute I receive it, I enter it in my cash account. You've sent me a check for 100, I debit cash. But I've then got to take the check to my bank. My bank's got to contact your bank. And again, it can be several days before it appears on the bank statement. And during that period, the bank will show a different balance. Well, we call that a deposit or a lodgement not yet credited. So this is a payment received, money received. It's been entered in the cash account. When I received it, I have debited cash, but it's not yet appeared on the bank statement. And remember how I've already said, um, when it does appear on the bank statement, because it's money received, the bank will credit your account. Uh, over the page, dishonoured cheques. Well, what this is, I said, I write a cheque to you, I owe you a hundred, write on a piece of paper. Well, I don't know. What's to stop me doing this? To write a cheque and say, pay you 10,000. Uh, no problem. It's only a piece of paper. And of course, you receive that and you're terribly happy. 10,000. But I haven't got 10,000 in the bank. And so what happens? You take that cheque to your bank. Your bank contacts my bank. My bank, instead of transferring the money, they come back and say, there is no money there. And your bank contacts you and tells you, there's no money. Now that's called a dishonoured cheque. Dishonoured or returned cheque. Uh, now in fact in exams uh, we assume that the companies we're dealing with never do this. They only write checks when they have got money. So for the exam, this is always a check we have received. And of course, as soon as we receive a check, we don't know there's a problem. Uh, it'll have been entered in the cash account. But we find out later that there's no money. And so as you'll see, we need to cancel the receipt.
We enter when we receive the cheque, so we've debited cash. We think we're all right. Find out a week later there is no cash, but we need to credit cash just to cancel it because there was no receipt. And of course, completely separately, I'll start chasing you or whoever wrote the cheque, and maybe you end up being an irrecoverable, but that's a separate issue. Now, next one, credit transfers. Or bank transfer. Uh, although in the UK, uh, we people still do use cheques, far more common these days is to do it on the internet and to just tell the bank, transfer 100 to you. Well, we call that a credit or a bank transfer. Uh, it's simply um, what you might call an automatic Oh, well, no, it's not automatic. Um, it's instructing the bank to transfer money. So you're not using a cheque. Uh, these days you're doing it over the internet. Uh, standing orders. Again, depends what country you're in, but you've quite probably seen these. Uh, suppose I have um, I, I, I have to pay rent of $100 a month. Well, instead of having to remember every month to either write a cheque or to, to make an internet transfer, uh, what you can do is just tell the bank, transfer 100 every month, and they'll carry on doing it automatically until I tell them to stop. Um, so I don't have to do anything again. It automatically goes every month um, without me having to worry. So it's an automatic transfer. Of a fixed amount. At regular intervals. So, 100 every month for rent. Or maybe, ooh, I have to pay insurance and I pay 500 every three months. So again, tell the bank, automatically, 500, last day of every third month. Standing order. Uh, finally, very similar but direct debits. Standing orders are fine for things like rent, where, you know, it is a fixed amount every month. But for things like the telephone bill, you know, my telephone bill is different every month. Some months it may be $10, some months it may be $100. Standing order doesn't work. Uh, instead, you can use a direct debit, in which case you give the telephone company permission to take every month whatever amount is owing. Uh, they have to send you the bill first so you've got time to complain if it's wrong. But this month all oh, the bills $10, automatically they take $10 from my bank. Next month it's 100 automatically they take 100 from the bank. Uh, some people get very worried about doing it, you know, the telephone company might steal too much money. Uh, obviously, there can be mistakes, but in fact, the bank guarantees that if there is an error, they put it right and then they argue uh, with the telephone company, whoever it is. Anyway, a direct debit. It's an automatic payment, just like standing order, but of a variable amount. It's a payment because remember the bank, when you pay money, the bank will debit your account. Uh, anyway, that's just terminology, but I'm afraid that that's part of the problem in exam questions. More importantly though, or just as important, you'll see next reasons why the bank balance on the bank statement might be different from the cash account. And there are three reasons why when I get my bank statement, it may show different. 
One is obviously cash book errors and omissions. If I've made a mistake, you know, I paid out, sorry, I had a thousand of cash. I pay out a hundred and I automatically enter ten. Uh, sorry, I accidentally enter ten when I really paid a hundred. Well, the bank, of course, was a thousand. They've taken out a hundred. I show now 90. I've made a mistake, obviously. Uh, I've, the two don't agree. And when I find out why they don't agree, ah, it's because I entered the wrong figure. Clearly, I'll then correct it. The actual payment was 100. I'll enter another 90, and it's now correct. Uh, that's an error. Um, an omission missed out. Could have been that I paid 100 and forgot to enter it. Simple as that. Maybe it's a standing order. Hundreds going every month and I've forgotten. So I've not entered it. I've got a thousand. The bank, of course, did. And that is, it should be 900. Well, of course, as soon as I find out, realise what the problem is, I should have entered a hundred. I will. Um, bank mistakes. Now, they're obviously less likely and certainly for the exam a lot less likely, but banks can make mistakes. Uh, my sister and I, until she got married, had the same last name. And I, we've got two first names. The initials are the same, but the other way around. Uh, and once I'd spent money, I'd written a cheque, and the bank, by mistake, took the money out of my sister's account instead of my account. Which would have been wonderful, except my sister noticed and was rather upset. Uh, but anyway, it's rare, but the bank can make mistakes. And obviously, if the bank has made a mistake, you tell the bank and they put it right. However, finally, even if there have been no mistakes, then certainly in the UK, the, the bank statement will never agree with the bank statement because of these checks in the post. I showed you earlier, but I had a thousand. I've written a cheque for a hundred. I've only got nine hundred left. But the bank statement, it will be several days, easily a week, before that cheque, the money leaves my account. It will leave the account, so wait a week or two and it will go down to 900. But if I want to check today, the two don't agree. It's not because anybody's made a mistake, but it's because of checks in the post. And our job, I'm about to stop this lecture, in the next lecture though, we'll look through an example. Our job in examples, as in real life, is to make sure we can explain why the two are different. Because again, nobody's made a mistake here. But we've got to make sure we can explain and find, ah, it's a hundred check in the post. Beautiful. If I can't explain, then of course there have to be mistakes and we better find them. So that's what a bank reconciliation is. Reconciliation, it's agreeing. It's making sure we can explain what the difference is. Uh, I've called it timing differences there at the top of the next page. But it's a combination of checks we've written, unpresented checks, and checks we've received, uh, large ones not credited. Well, again, we need to make sure we can reconcile or explain the difference. I'll show you how we do with an example uh, in the next lecture. Sorry that was a lot of talk, but the next lecture will go straight into the numbers.